In this video, I want to do a brain dump for seasoned FileMaker experts who just need the information about the FileMaker cloud kind of fast and furious. Well, let's get that going right away. So first off, what is FileMaker Cloud? FileMaker Cloud is a special Linux version of FileMaker Server that has been crafted and coupled together and designed to work very closely with Amazon's AWS infrastructure. FileMaker Cloud is not a separate Linux installer that you can get and run on your own Linux systems. FileMaker Cloud is heavily architected and crafted to be easily installed and easily managed by Amazon's infrastructure. And what I mean by this is that Amazon has all sorts of automatic systems that help manage servers, update servers, install servers, configure servers, all this sort of automated stuff. FileMaker Cloud is designed to tap straight into those systems to allow for easy administration, easy setup, easy maintenance. So first off, FileMaker Cloud is Linux. FileMaker Cloud is not coming to you as a separate installer anytime on the radar that I see. But also keep in mind is that FileMaker Server, Mac, and Window that we've always enjoyed is not going anywhere as well. So what does FileMaker Cloud mean to you? It means that when you get to the point of deploying your solution in a mission critical environment, you're gonna look at FileMaker Server, Mac, and Windows, or you're going to look at FileMaker Cloud running up on Amazon's data center. It's a new choice that we have going forward. It's not either one or the other. You get to pick the best one that fits your needs. What I will say is that the time to build and set up and install a FileMaker Cloud server is like 15, 20 minutes to do that. It's very rapid with a high degree of success. In fact, I've never seen it fail. On the flip side of that, building a Windows-based server up on Vulture or on Amazon takes time to do that, normally in the order of hours to really set that up and configure it properly. So if the upside is high-speed configuration, what's the downside of FileMaker Cloud? Well, there are a number of downsides to it. Some of them are near-term limitations or limitations because it's kind of a 1.0 product, and FileMaker is going to address these issues going forward. So first off, Issue one is that FileMaker Cloud is only available in the eastern region of the United States and in the western region of the United States. So if you want to set up a FileMaker Cloud server in Europe, in Asia Pacific, in Australia, etc., all these are places where Amazon has data centers. FileMaker Cloud has not been yet blessed to go into those areas. So the idea is that initial rollout will be for North America, and then future rollouts, which will come fairly often, and I'll leave it up to FileMaker to describe what fairly often is, will look towards adding Europe and Asia Pacific, etc. So say that setting up a server in one of these regions is acceptable to you, what are the other limitations of it? Well, with FileMaker Cloud, the licensing options that you have for it are pretty much limited to annual FileMaker licenses. There are no perpetual licenses. So that means that if you like to buy FileMaker outright, three or four years or whenever you like to do that, that's a perpetual license. You can buy maintenance on it every year, but basically if you don't pay FileMaker for it, you get to keep the software. Perpetual is also much more expensive than the annual, but largely the software business has been moving towards an annual licensing program. And so FileMaker Cloud, because of the way Amazon charges and rents and sells its services, those services are either by the hour or monthly or annually, etc. So it's much more of a situation where an annual FileMaker license fits with an Amazon offering. So if you have a customer that's perpetual, they have to convert that license to an annual before they can use FileMaker Cloud. What about plugins with FileMaker Cloud? FileMaker Cloud supports plugins if they are recompiled for the Linux operating system, etc. You're going to need to check with your vendors. I have checked with the two largest vendors of plugins, namely 360 Works and Productive Computing, and both of these organizations have mixed plans about when and how they're bringing their products to the FileMaker Cloud. I know that to some degree both organizations are looking at this. I know 360 Works is actively converting their plugins, but it will take some time to do that. And I know that Productive is looking at which products they can bring forward, as well as bringing new products forward as well. 
So if your deployment hinges upon a server side plugin, you're going to need to make sure in advance that that plugin is available. What clients can access FileMaker Cloud? Pro clients, no restrictions. Go clients, no restrictions. FIAS, which is iOS app SDK clients, can access with no restrictions. WebDirect, no problem there as well. However, FileMaker Cloud will only accept clients that are using the 15.0 v2 or 15.0.2 release. So that's an updated version. It has some additional changes and tweaks to it. So if you're using FileMaker 14 or 13 or 12, even though the file format is compatible, those clients cannot talk to FileMaker Cloud. So if you're rolling out a server with potentially older connected clients, don't do it on FileMaker Cloud. You need to use the regular FileMaker server on Mac and Windows. What about custom web publishing? Custom web publishing for PHP and the XML gateways are not available in FileMaker Cloud. FileMaker has plans to address this to some degree. I don't know exactly when they're going to do it, and I know that they're doing it somewhat obliquely, so understand that for the time being, XML and PHP will continue to live in a regular FileMaker server and not in FileMaker Cloud. What about access via Active Directory? If you're a Windows shop and you want to have a Active Directory roster or listing of all your employees or staff and you want to use that to direct the access into FileMaker solutions, that will continue to need to be done in FileMaker Server. FileMaker Cloud is not going to directly support Active Directory. Once again, FileMaker has plans in this area to address this topic in a broad sort of way, but once again, there's no immediate access to Active Directory. What about servers where you need absolute maximum performance? Well, the short version is, is that having a robust FileMaker server in your office provides the fastest possible access, period. However, if your FileMaker solution is reasonably scalable and to some degree has been optimized for a wide area connection, so if you're using FM Starting Point, for example, it has been explicitly optimized for use on a wide area connection. So if you're using FM Starting Point or a version of FM Starting Point, you're in great shape. So feel free to use a FileMaker Cloud. If you have some high intensity solution where you're doing lots of sorting with large sets of records, like sorting 10, 20, 50, 100,000 records, and this kind of thing, and you're constantly chewing on reports, that kind of thing, then having a on-premise server will give you a decidedly faster performance advantage over FileMaker Cloud. That's not a limitation of the server software, that's a limitation of the internet and the latency between point A and point B on the internet. The farther the server is away from you, the slower certain functions will run. And as an experienced FileMaker person, you already know that. So what about setup of the FileMaker Cloud and the controls for the FileMaker Cloud? Well, the setup for FileMaker Cloud is totally different from any setup or installation that you have seen previously. We have videos that cover this. My expectation is that there will be a handful of people who adopt this early and who provide guidance to other people, but we have videos on how to do this. It's just very different. There's no Windows installers. There's no Linux installers. You don't double click and it installs itself. It's through the Amazon console for the most part with some interaction with the FileMaker website under some conditions. So the point is, is that once it's installed, you don't have to worry about it. It runs automatically. You get to a URL like this and you're going to log in. And this is right here very similar to what we've seen with the FileMaker administrative console, the UAC. FileMaker calls this the CAC, the FileMaker Cloud Admin Console or CAC. The UAC is what we call the Admin Console from FileMaker Pro. So this is the console. When you log on, this is all you see. You don't at any time actually see the desktop or the workspace of the Linux operating system. You're completely abstracted from that. Your entire interface into the world is this right here or the Amazon console itself, which shows you less information than this for the most part. So this is showing you dashboard of who's connected, how they're connected, that type of thing. The databases that you have connected right now, this is a fresh instance I just spun up. There's no databases on it. Backups that are made. Backups are made every 20 minutes automatically and they are very quick, very rapid. They are faster than any backups I have seen run on regular FileMaker server. And that's even with SSDs. That being said, 
When you set these servers up, you get to pick the size of drives that you're using on these things. And under your subscription, you can go down here to storage settings and you'll notice that you have the size of the hard drive. This is just the size of the live database where it lives. So you can pick whatever size and the sizes go well beyond this right here. It's important to understand that the drives that we are using here are SSD. So we are using high speed technology on Amazon's data center, their infrastructure. We also have the instances right here that you see these are the approved instances. We have a checklist that we talk about this, but this is the list of instances that are available. Now these prices right here are Amazon's on-demand pricing. FileMaker is quoting the most expensive pricing tier that you can purchase or rent from Amazon. So what we've done to get a better, more realistic expectation of your instance and hardware costs is we created this little FileMaker file right here and these prices are approximate plus or minus five cents. These prices are actually kind of commodity items and the prices kind of go up and down depending upon usage, but they never really move more than five or 10 cents. So you can pretty much take it the bank that these are fairly accurate, at least as of October, 2016. So these are the instances that FileMaker allows us to access. There are probably 50 different sizes of instances that Amazon makes available to the public. But you can see the prices are as low as $18 a month for on-demand, and if you do a three-year commitment, you can get the prices way down. So on-demand, this means you're using it minute by minute, hour by hour. It's the worst possible pricing. This does not include the FileMaker server software. This is just the hardware rental from Amazon. So. The FileMaker server software is the same prices that people have been paying already. So there are no price increases or price differences there. So for example, a five pack of FLT for five users where they get to use server and all the different clients is $888 a year. That 888 that you would buy for an on-premise server or that team there on-premise is the same price that you're gonna pay here. So it's no different. FileMaker Cloud does not represent a magical financial boom to FileMaker Incorporated. It simply represents a new door that's open that gives you an option for a server. So prices here, on demand, one year commitments, three year commitments, the prices come way down. Server down here has got uh, tons of processors, tons of RAM. I don't know if I've ever personally seen a server this awesome before. But you're talking 1700 bucks per month if you're doing some sort of hourly rental. If you needed a server that big, then you commit for three years and get the price way down by a third. Of course, that would be for like 100 plus users. That's crazy large. Most of the servers that we've been playing with for between 20, 30, 40 people, maybe 50 people, would be the C4 high CPU unit right here which works out to about 63 bucks a month, and the M4 Extra Large, which is about 70 bucks a month. They're similar, they have trade-offs in different areas. And of course, if you need something more than that, then you're moving up towards $130 a month. And that would be for people that have at least, I would think, 50 users and maybe more. And then paying 138 bucks a month is not a big deal. Once again, this doesn't include the FileMaker software cost itself. So that's kind of pretty much your brain dump. Um, you have the admin control interface here. This is the only interface that you pretty much have. You have backups that run automatically. They self-configure. They back up onto Amazon S3 if you care about such things. The backups are super efficient. It only backs up the data that changes. It doesn't even back up full files. If you get a three gigabyte file and hundred K of it get changed, then at the 20 minute backup, that hundred K is what gets written to the backup. So in a restoration process, it's important to understand that the restoration is a complete restoration of the server. When you say restore it, it's going to take the current files that are live, back them up, push them away, and then bring forward the backup that you've identified. The backup restoration is not a tactical system. It doesn't allow you to identify file by file. It's a kind of a strategic nuke that goes off where it blows the entire server up and brings everything back. So if you want to restore one file or three files, it's going to be kind of a hassle with FileMaker Cloud. FileMaker is aware of this limitation. They would like to address it in the future. That's kind of backups. ODBC is, has support here, but uh, if you go to configuration here, you can get into ODBC data sources here, etc. All you have to do is put in the DSN, 
and you're set. Now this is the ODBC data sources that are the standard three ones, not the new three that were uh, released recently with 15. We're talking Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL. The Postgres and DB2 and all that stuff, those are not supported in here because those were with this ESS adapter technology, which was a little different. And then finally, as a closing point with this technology, understand that files that get hosted up here have to have the ear encryption enabled, encryption at rest. If you upload a file that doesn't have ear enabled, it's going to actually encrypt it for you. So it'll pop a dialogue. It will say, what do you want this encryption key to be? And so that is the encryption key that allows you to decrypt the file on the machine wherever it's at. Now in this case, it's gonna be living on a Linux server up in the Amazon cloud, but they still want it encrypted. So in case the machine is attacked, somehow someone gets it, that data is encrypted at a very deep level that protects it from any sort of normal adversary. That being said, the ear encryption has to be enabled. Also, when you get the cloud set up for the first time, it comes with 90 days of SSL already built in. So if you go here to configuration, you see SSL certificates, you get a free 90 day trial certificate. So we set this server up yesterday, a couple days ago, and my certificate expires right before Christmas. So before that period, we would go here and we would say, renew the certificate and go through the process of having a 12 month certificate dropped on here. The cost of this certificate, I'm not entirely sure about. I've seen it quoted as low as like 67 bucks for the year. And then I've also seen it as high as $99 for the year. So obviously this part of the system is still being tested out at the time I'm recording this. That being said, um, SSL is required, ear encryption is required. So operating with FileMaker Cloud, FileMaker and Apple are requiring maximum security be enabled. So running around without encryption, running around without passwords, without SSL, those are all gonna be problematic and the cloud won't let you do it. So understand that'll be part of the process that goes into this. Now, once it's set up and running, it's completely abstracted from the customers. You know that. They won't even notice at all that they're encrypted unless they notice the little green lock that's on their interface. So that gets you an idea of what you're into with this. It's pretty straightforward. Immediately, what does it mean for you today? Maybe nothing. If you have customers that are happy with their existing server, just leave them be. This only applies to situations where customers are going to upgrade a server, buy a new server hardware for the office. Should they do that, would they be better off parking this out on Amazon's data center? If they're already parking something out on Amazon or on Vulture, then this is most likely the best way to go unless they fall into one of those little caveat areas where they don't fit. They want PHP, they want Active Directory, they want a plugin for the server that's not available yet from the plugin manufacturer or third party company. So um, you gotta check to make sure this stuff is going, but I think for the most part, the setup, maintenance, security, across the board, this is a much simpler process to use and certainly FileMaker is investing heavily in the cloud offering and this will be a critical central part of the product going forward.